Hey, what's up? This is Matt Dietz, and this is Agency Launch. This is the show where I talk about running an insurance agency. I talk about sales and marketing strategies for insurance agents. I talk about staffing for insurance agents. I talk about retention and customer service for insurance agents. One of the most popular questions that I get right now is, hey, Matt, I know I'm supposed to quote a certain amount of people every day. How do I find people to quote? Well, if you text me right now to 208-213-8809, I have an asset pulled directly from my master class that I'm giving out for free. Text me 20 policies to 208-213-8809, and I will show you how to write 20 policies this week. On with the show. All right, so today I wanted to talk about some sales stuff. So I sent a text to my community, uh, 208-213-8809, and because I was going through some sales training myself, some higher level stuff, and the trainer said something I loved. I was like, oh, because I'm falling short somewhere in some of my sales processes, and honestly, I think I knew why I just didn't, I needed somebody to say it. I was being lazy, right? So there are certain sales, most sales, the real sales, you know, the ones you actually want to get. Um, you, you should be talking to people face to face. Okay. And she said something, she's like, Hey, you know, we live in a world of automation and we live in a world of things where processes can be easier and uh, I think I was building out something hoping to go fishing and to close deals without doing a lot of work. I'm like, hey, I got all this automation. What? I, you know, I do all this stuff. People should just want to buy it, right? Um, she goes, you know what, Matt? He goes, never send a piece of paper to do a salesperson's job. And I was like, oh, damn, that's good. I was like, that's right. And I know that. You know, you can't, you, you can't send emails and texts and write a ton of insurance, okay? Or sell any product, especially if you're doing life or commercial or financial services, right? So anyway, um, so I put out that text to my community. I loved it. I was like, hey, let's get back to the kitchen tables. I was kind of, it was like a little rally cry. I was like, you know, I said, I know we live in a time when things are quote unquote easy, but I promise you your closing ratio will double if you sit across the table from someone, you know, for for life, commercial, personal, or whatever. Quit emailing proposals and go look someone in the eye. And I agree with that. You know, that's how I built my business. Um, but there's a shift that's happening and we're in the middle of it right now. And I got a text from a friend of mine who replied. His name's Ryan. What's up, Ryan? Appreciate you help me out with this. You know, he was like, look, man, I respect you. And, um, I respect what you've done, but we are changing our model and we're going to be doing things a lot more streamlined. We're going to be using things like video calls and DocuSign and ACH. And, um, you know, I used to do business with the kitchen table and paper and collecting checks and running to the bank too, you know, but times are changing. And I agree with him hundred percent. My message wasn't necessarily to say we have to go and this is where, you know, some communications can get lost in just words like a text, right? But if Ryan and I were having a conversation, you know, which we kind of did, but I'm just extrapolating it here. You know, I would tell him like, look, maybe it's not necessarily, maybe I overspoke or was trying to make a statement by saying, let's get across the kitchen table and shake hands and wear fedoras and you know, get back in front of people. I think that is necessary. I think we, but I think the kitchen table may be replaced by Zoom. Okay. And then a, a second place would be a bomb bomb or video email. But I can't, the bottom line is like, please don't expect to be closing a lot of business if you're just emailing proposals and shooting out texts. All right. That is just a way to connect with someone, a way to get their attention. And it's getting harder and harder to do that. Okay, let's be clear. It's getting harder and harder to call people. There's the do not call list, which is not enforced, but you shouldn't do it anyway um, if they're not on the do not call list. Texting laws are changing too. What if they take that away from you? Okay. When I first started in 2004, my district manager, cold calling, this 
this industry had been cold calling for 50 years, okay? Or when was the phone invented? I don't know. A long time, right? And he said, things are changing. This is 2004. He goes, things are changing. There's this newer thing called the do not call list. He said, at some point in time, everyone's going to be on it. You're not going to be allowed to cold call. That scared the hell out of me. All right. I was like, I just entered an industry where the way they've been doing business for 50 years is about to go extinct. And I took him seriously. I stopped cold calling and I learned to do business differently. I think we're at a tipping point again um, where, you know, I don't know how long internet leads are going to be a thing. Like they, I hate internet leads and you, you all know that, but um, I still, the other thing I'm thinking about, we see all the stuff about, what is it? Um, you know, the AI that's coming out to create content. And I'm putting a lot of thought into like, what does this mean for my industry? My dad worked for, my dad sold advertising for the Chicago Tribune for 30 years. It was the only job he had. And um, he got out in like 1999 or 2000, which was the perfect time to get out of the newspaper industry. Print uh, is still around Obviously, but it was decimated by the internet. You know, Gary Vaynerchuk says the internet is going to swallow everything. And uh, so I put some thought, I'm like, well, when is our industry going to be, you know, replaced by AI or robots? And, you know, it's easy to, to be like, well, we'll never go away. That's what the, that's what the newspaper guys said. The newspaper guys had a chance. If you read the autobiography of Steve Jobs, the newspaper industry and the music industry thought they were bulletproof and uh, they, they got killed. All right. And there's some ego in there and I don't want to fall victim to that and think that, well, insurance agents are going to be, you know, we're always going to be needed. I think I, I've been put, I don't have, I don't have an answer to this as, as you can tell, but um, I think that, there are certain times where, you know, in certain industries where a human voice, a voice of reason, uh, an educated person in that industry um, is going to still be necessary, okay? And our products are complicated enough, you know, to warrant us as professionals, okay? So um, there's gray area in some of our contracts and there's, there's interpretation that a machine can't do yet, but you know, maybe someday. So, um, so I think we're good for a while. People have been talking about self-driving cars for the last 10 years. And again, that was another thing that came up in, in meetings like 10 years ago. I had people that I sat in groups of insurance agents and they say, you know, what's going to happen to auto insurance is self-driving cars are going to come. Accidents are essentially going to go away. And um, the cost of auto insurance is going to go down so much that uh, you're going to have to find a different product to sell. I've sat in rooms where that's been said. And I was skeptical back then because, I mean, the self-driving car thing, I don't know if we're ever going to hit, you know, in my lifetime. And I'm 50 years old, you know, uh, where the Jetsons are, where the, you just drive around and, and everything works. I mean, I think we're... I don't know. I think we're a long way from that still. But um, these are the things that I think about and that you need to be thinking about. So so uh, what I'm getting at is the agency of today should be different than the agency of five years ago and different than the agency five years before that. Your agency in five years should be different than it is today. I think continuing to look at market trends, look at technology, learning about them, studying them, and implementing them is, is important. It'll keep you relevant, okay? I've always prided myself on being a little bit ahead of the curve. I like being first to market to try new technologies. I mean, I, I've been podcasting for seven years, all right? I've been sending video emails for four years. Um, I do things that I think are fun and exciting and try and stay ahead of it. I try and remain a leader in the industry and I will tell you what's working and what isn't. So um, 
yeah, we've, we have new CRMs that we've onboarded in my agency and we have automation in my agency and, and we do things, you know, differently than the average agent. And I'm just trying to, uh, you know, being an agency owner isn't just selling insurance. You're running a business and you have to figure out how to do it in the most cost efficient, uh, you know, and time efficient manner. And that's the puzzle that we're all trying to put together. And uh, I love working on that puzzle. So anyway, I just thought I would riff on this for you today and uh, speak freely on my thoughts. And I hope it was helpful. So that's all I got for you today. My name is Matt. This is Agency Launch. You can find me all over the place. I am on, I'm a heavy user on LinkedIn, so connect with me there. Send me a text, 208-213-8809. Hop in my community and um, check out my program, agencylaunch.net. If you want to learn everything that I've learned, it's all in there. You want to learn how to do a podcast? There's something in there. You want to learn how to do a video series to brand yourself? It's in there. You want to learn how to staff up properly so that your team does all your heavy lifting? It's in there. Do you want to learn how to write more business and increase your closing ratio? It's in there. Like everything's in there. So agencylaunch.net, check it out, book a call with me and let's, let's work together. All right. Thank you so much for listening. Keep up the good work.